All right, so we've made it this far on our beekeeping journey this year. So it's been a pretty good year. Uh, harvest, so I started out with four hives, expanded from that. Ended up harvesting so far about 50 jars, or 50 pints of honey. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's a pretty good amount. Um, now, after the honey, you have the wax. So with the top bar hive, uh, they say you get a lot more wax. Uh, I think you do get more, but wax is so thin and there's such a minimal amount of wax that I still, between the two, you don't see a huge difference. Um, so I'll show you what I'm rendering. So I'm rendering all the wax this year that, that I've harvested, and I'm also rendering some of this old nasty stuff that I've had in the freezer for over a year. Uh, when winter comes and they clean out these old combs, what I do is... I uh, take them out because all of this stuff, um, let me try to get you to zoom in. So this uh, webbing, that's wax moths, and all this dark stuff that has cocoons in it from the brood, the wax moths will come in here and eat all that up. And if you leave this in the hive and the bees during winter, kind of con they consolidate a lot so you don't have as many bees to protect it, uh, the wax moths will just run rampant. So I take this out, uh, usually it's empty, you see I have bees and bumblebees around here because some of this wax still has honey in it. Uh, and what I'll do is you just, you can break it, but a lot of times I just kind of squish it up into a ball and throw it in there. Now, when you do boil this, um, all these cocoons that you can't even really see because they're so thin, that makes that dark, uh, all of those cocoons are the nastiness that you don't want. Essentially all of this wax uh, kind of around it. It's kind of hard to separate the two. That's what you want. So you'll have all this junky nasty stuff uh, Kind of at the bottom when you render it and you'll have all the the yellow wax on top and that's what you want You want to separate it up So basically what I'm gonna do is I'll show you what I got too. I Have all of this stuff in here like this was where I, I crushed it and This is some of the stuff. I've already rendered down from this year and that's some of that nastiness I said you'll have on the bottom. And that's a lot of nastiness over there, harassing all my stuff. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna render. So this year and some of last year that I pulled out of the hives. I don't think there's anything in here for Marlo to eat, but he will definitely try. I'm doing this outside with this old turkey fryer just because it was given me a few years ago and I haven't used it. Uh, inside it will make a mess and you'll probably have wax everywhere. And uh, you, I don't really wanna deal with that. <laughs> so. Uh, as we boil this down, I'll try to show you the process that we do. So now that we have our wax melted down, it's been raining all afternoon. Uh, so I uh, just want to pull it out before it gets really hard because it's easier to pull out of the pot. I'll show you what I got. So as you can see, uh, it's still pretty soft because it's still flakes off. I might let it harden up a little bit. I might go ahead and bend it some, break it so it comes up easily. If you see like this stuff usually comes to the bottom, it's all of the cappings, it's still a little bit hot. Uh, I've had it covered because the bees are still kind of going everywhere. So I'll let this harden up a little bit more, 
essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and just scrape all this stuff off. I'll melt it down a couple more times. I like to do uh, a few uh, a few boilings of it. It really helps get the, the wax really yellow and clean. So, first step. I also wanna show y'all what happens when you leave anything with honey out in your yard and you have bees. Um, those are all bees in that honey. This is just the leftover in the honey bucket. Um, those bees, I know they they look hurt, they look dead, but they will definitely kind of come back to life uh, once they get dried off. A lot of those on the side have already kind of kind of done that, um, but they're they're for, they're fat and happy. Um, they're getting all the food. They're I've had a couple kind of fly on me to clean themselves off, as you can see. She's kind of uh, cleaned her back leg off a little bit. So yeah, that's what you happen. That's what will happen when you have them everywhere. All right, so here we go. Let's check again. See if it's good enough to get stuff off of. All right. So again, this is the first time we're gonna do it. It's cooled down. You see, we have this cake, and we also have all of these nasty cappings on the bottom of this. Put this right down here for a second. And the bees already smell this, so they're all over. So we have this left in the bottom. And like I said, it's just a little bit of wax mixed in with all that nastiness. I'm gonna dump this out and get rid of it. Uh, I'm gonna scrape this off of the bottom. Just pull it off like that. So essentially we're left with a lot of lot less wax cappings and we're just left with that cake. And I'm gonna boil it one more time just to kind of refine this down a little bit further. So, that's the plan. All right, so this is boil number two of my stuff. And just so you don't think I'm trying to pat it. Uh, friend Alvin gave me all this wax that uh, he had melted down for some comb honey that I had given him a while back. So we just exchange it. So I'm gonna add this to the boiling pot already and uh, show you what I do next after the second boiling. the bees clean up. All right, so here we go. We got the second rendering in this bucket, so we're gonna see what we got. All right. So here's the second rendering. Looks a little bit cleaner. And we have all of these wax cap, all of these um, cocoons on the bottom. So same thing. I'll scrape this off. There's lots of bees around here, so I'm trying not to get stuck in the face. Uh, some wire in there. All right, so scrape that off. What we're left with is that big old chunk. So it's looking good. All right, in here. And we got all this nasty stuff. This water is really nasty. So that was two renderings and I added some stuff in the second one that Alvin gave me. So uh, for the last rendering, uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. But first I'm gonna get this cleaned out a little bit. All right, so here is why I say, do not use a good pot because you get all of this nasty wax built up in the sides. And it's hard to get off your good cookware, so it's good to use just an old pot. You can just fill this up with water and boil it, and it's easier to melt out. But if you try to scrub this out, it is not gonna wanna come unless it's it's hot, because that wax is, is tough. You have to warm that stuff up to clean it out. So, next step. Just to get a good amount of the wax last wax cappings off. Um, I'm gonna use this uh, paint strainer that I've been using to separate out the honey. And this time of year, the bees are very, uh, they're very robby. So you see they're kind of everywhere all over this wax. Also be careful where you do this if you do it outside because I'm on my back patio and there's bees everywhere. 
I'm okay with it, but if you're in a neighborhood, they might not necessarily be. So we're still just breaking this stuff up. And like I said, the bees are everywhere all over it. I'm also gonna add in this other stuff that Alvin gave me too. And I gotta get this in pretty quick because the bees are going nuts. on while I get the water ready. Add enough water just to get a good boil going. Uh -oh. Trying to keep all these bees out. <laughs> they are crazy. This is also a good indicator that you do not want to be in your hives very long at this time of year um, because the bees will start robbing the hives out and robbing is something to definitely look out for. All right, so I'm gonna start this up, get it boiling, and then we'll see how we strain it out after that. All right, so we got this melted for the third time. And I'm trying not to burn my hands. And again, it's pretty, it's pretty hot still but you got all the cocoons on the top and why this cheesecloth is convenient. Or sorry, I, I've used cheesecloth before. Why this uh, paint strainer is convenient. Just lift it up, let it strain out some. And you got all that nastiness stuck inside. I'm gonna try just to squish it out a little bit. See that wax on top? <laughs> There's still quite a bit of wax in here, and there's bees literally everywhere right now. Got a lot of girls getting in my face. There we go. So I'm just gonna throw this over there in the grass. I'll tend with that later. And I saw this really cool way to do this. And I'm gonna shift over a little bit just to kind of give the girl some room. Uh, and in case I spill. All right, so it's been raining on and off all day. Uh, kind of been doing this in between. The longest part about doing this wax is letting it cool off. Um, so I did a couple things. Um, one was a new thing that I wanted to try, and that is to put it back through after the paint strainer, try to put it through uh, a pillowcase, because they're saying the pillowcase gets it really clean. The problem with that, the method that I saw him do the pillowcase was uh, he used like a steamer, so he had continuous steam. Doing it this way, the wax already starts to cool down once it hits the pillowcase, so it essentially just makes it into a pillowcase uh, kind of like wax bag so the wax doesn't want to permeate through so that's the, the, the problem I found so I'll just show you the difference between what I was able to get through it so that method it does get cleaner you can see that and it's pretty clean I actually had some bees get in there when I was trying to do it because these bees have been insane today there's a little bit on the bottom but there's not too much so it was a good method I don't <clears throat> I don't think doing it this way would necessarily be the best way to do it as far as pouring it when it's liquid into the pillowcase. You need something to keep that heat continuous. Um, here's just what happens when you put it right through the cheesecloth, or sorry, the paint strainer. Um, it gets this stuff on the bottom. So it doesn't get quite all of it. Um, I can melt it down a couple more times and you get all this, get rid of all of this stuff. But I mean, as far as just rendering it down, um, you know, three times, I don't think this is that bad of a product. And just filtering it through the last time, just through that uh, paint strainer, I think it's a pretty good result. So with this, um, I've never tried it before, but I saw a video where they did uh, wax dip candles. So that might be what I try to do with these. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. I've, uh, besides making chapstick one year with these, I've never really used the wax spring thing. 
uh, which is kind of insulting for somebody having a top bar hive and not using the wax. <laughs> so we're going to try that this year and see how it turns out. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the wax. Uh, I have a pretty good amount, so I uh, should be able to make some cool candles and hopefully have that in the future. Alright, so a couple other things. One is I'm getting close to that 250 subscriber mark thanks to you guys, uh, sharing it, putting it out to people. I really appreciate that for sure. Uh, at that 250 subscribers, uh, I said a while back I haven't mentioned it a lot because I don't want to um, kind of <laughs> beg for subscribers even though we all kind of do. Uh, going to be giving a free nuke away. Um, I was originally thinking like a four frame nuke because that's what I had available, but I got you know a couple back there that's uh, you know good solid five frame nukes. So I'll be giving one of those away. Um, probably do something, just make a make a quick uh, video and just give everybody like a week, whoever wants to submit to, to win that. Uh, so basically I can't ship it, so it's gonna have to be a local like Jacksonville pickup or I can even deliver it if it's in the surrounding counties. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of uh, orchestrate that. It'll probably be a video and just have everybody who wants to take part in that uh, reply to that video, uh, just to make things simple and give everybody a chance. Uh, another thing is uh, I have the Instagram. I don't really do too much with that, but I just started a TikTok. Um, I feel like I'm way too old to be doing that, but uh, you know, it's something that the, the kids are watching. So trying to get my kids kind of involved with that and basically the TikTok is only just for nonsense so anything crazy around here that we see um, with these many animals you tend to see some nonsense so uh, yeah that's what that's for so if you guys want to uh, follow me on that or Instagram and I appreciate y'all uh, subscribing and commenting and liking uh, it means a lot and it's uh, uh, pretty cool so thank y'all, love y'all, I'll see y'all next video, and let me know if y'all need anything, put them in the comments.